there will come times when we sense that our strength is not sufficient to get us through what's ahead. Something happens, and you wonder, how will I get through this? You may hear you have serious health problems, or you lose your job, or your, your kids, they're near the edge, or there's a death in the family, or perhaps a significant relationship is in trouble. And these things, they happen to us all. And it is in times like this where I want to encourage us to embrace the promises of God's care. The psalmist is quick to remind us this, and that is that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Underscore that. You might want to reflect on that when tough times come. And it's not just something we find in the Psalms or in the Old Testament, but even in the New Testament. If we go to Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, he relates all of the hardships that he had gone through. We tend to think of Paul, the great church planter, but Paul is also very authentic as he exposes the hardships of his life. And what did he say about it? His insight, I think, is really helpful. He said, but he, meaning the Lord, said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. For what? My power is made perfect in, underscore this, weakness. What? Therefore, I will boast the more gladly about what? My weakness. Why? So that Christ's power may rest on me. What a beautiful promise. Many of you here today, you have experienced some devastating times. And you got through it, didn't you? No matter how hopeless things may have seen, God cares about you. And God will provide the strength you need to make it. And remember, the reading this morning I love it when Eddie reads. Remember what he said? He said, uh, if God's for us, who could be against us? God is for us. Who could be against us? Those famous words remind us that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And when God is for you, as God is, who can be against that? And then remind yourself of it. See, God cares about you, but God goes a little further than just caring about you. I'm going to do a lot of wordsmithing in the message this morning. God not only cares, but we need to add a word there as well. God also takes care. Okay? Someone to care is one thing, but to say, I am committed and I am engaged to take care of some things that has been unsettling in your life. 
And God cares enough in taking care of it by getting the job done. And it is in this getting the job done of not only a God who cares, but who takes care, which is where Christianity and religion, where you find a differentiation. Because there is a difference. There's a difference between just the, the word in our language and our culture, the word religion, which has all kinds of emotions, especially in the times in which we live today. And there's a difference between the word religion and what I would call spirit-filled, dynamic, engaging Christianity. Now, usually... I wordsmith and make, try to make things simpler in just a fewer words. But especially on this Sunday that is Pentecost Sunday, to, to differentiate a bit how we look at Christianity as a spirit-filled, dynamic, engaging faith. So think of it this way, and, and I love this way of illustrating that kind of dynamic difference between just world religions and and what is before us as Christ's followers? It has been said, and I love this, that religion is spelled do. Do. I got baptized. I took communion. I was confirmed. I did some things. And yet, something's missing. Or it's a matter of a disciplined life, and you keep doing and doing and doing. And I fear I, I've, I've had conversations with folks who can often overdo it. They do and do and do and do and do to get the Lord's grace. But the problem, and if you wonder why, why do some people fall out of faith life or church life, the problem is they give up because they never know when enough is enough of what they're doing. But a spirit-filled, dynamic, engaged Christian faith Spells the word differently. It's not D-O, do. You add a few letters. It's done. It is what has been done for us that God the Father sent Jesus the Son to take care of it. It's done. It's what I did. Now, you may do these sacred things to express your love for me and your appreciation, it's like saying thank you to someone who's done something nice for you, but we don't do things nice, so we get something from someone. And don't do that in your walk to connect with God because it won't work for very long. God the Father sent Jesus the Son to take care of it. Now, I like how the Apostle Paul articulated that truth. Paul articulated this way. He said, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Do versus done. So two words I hope you remember as you relish the rest of this Sunday, this Lord's Day. Think of those two words. Do, done. How might that impact your faith and your thinking in the days to come? 
And I got two more words for you, okay? Do, done. And two more words, receive and trust. God's love is a gift to be received, taken in. And then once you receive that, the objective then is we live lives of trusting the truth of the gospel. And we count in that trust, we count that what Christ did on the cross is sufficient. Done. A done deal. And we count on God's leadership for the ongoing grace day by day to do what? To see us through. To see us through whatever news comes our way. It's done versus do. And grace versus a performance plan that you could never satisfy. Now I'd like to dive just a little deeper, just a little deeper. And that is, when we come to terms with that, it's that God's care for us can only be realized when we trust. It's the only way. The only way. And, and trust is actually a, another word that, that relates to faith. What is faith but trusting something? You know, in God we trust. We have faith in that currency. And trusting, if you think about it, is nothing new. Why do we think of it as new when we think of our, our faith in Christ? We trust every day. By flying on a plane, you trust that the pilot will get you to where you're wanting to go. And in today's climate, you just trust that the airplane won't have a, a, a door that'll fly off, right? That can happen. At the pharmacy, you trust you'll get the right prescription. It's trust. You're eating at a restaurant, you, you trust that your, your food will be okay. Nothing will be sabotaged. And confident living is putting your trust where? In Jesus Christ. And by doing so, you will have the confidence to get through the challenges that come with life. Do, done, receive, Trust. Think of four words now. Do, done. Receive, trust. Carmen, there's a song there that you can write. Do, done, receive, trust. Do, done, receive, trust. Oh, there's a song there. You too? Write it, okay? Do, done, receive, trust. I want to ask you, what kind of Christ follower are you going to decide to be today? How will you allow God's care to affect your life? When you think of do and done and receive and trusting. It is a day that for many of us, we're, we're jumping in and becoming involved in a team or as an officer or in some kind of ministry configuration. It's, it's a great day when, when you think of how many persons are committing themselves and nominating themselves to be involved. And, and it made me think of a, of a story that goes around how in every organization, every organization, it's structured around four kinds of bones. I, I like how this goes. Four kinds of bones. There's the wish bones, and they spend all their time wishing someone else would do the work. 
I wish this, I wish that. And you can become wishy-washy, and then you become wishy-washy. I wish, and I'm going to say, well, do it. Do it. Don't, good. Yeah, I wish. I wish. And we, we, there's probably all of us, are, we, we, we're all wish bones. I wish this would happen. And, and we do that. It's a way of kind of expressing an interest. And, but there's wish bones. And then there's uh, another kind of bone. There's the jaw bones. <laughs> they do all the talking, but little else. And I'm talking, okay? I feel bad. <laughs> The jawbones, they just talk and talk, and they all just, you know, just words. We, you know, you think of that. And there's knuckle bones who knock everything everybody else tries to do. They, all that is complaint, 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 and you get a point where you become immune to, ah, you know, just that way, and you just blow it off and go on. But we also know that there's another kind of bone. And it's the backbone, right? Who gets under the load and they do the work of the church. Well, at this place, I like it. Someone will say, well, Lonnie, how many members you got? I go, you know, it's really not how many members you have. It's how many difference makers you got. How many people who uh, make up the backbone? And uh, at Fox River, there's a lot of them. Yes, God will continue to build his church through you. And may you, in this day, and in this transitional, this hinge season of the church, be a backbone in the faith. Maybe our name tag should not only have our name, but say, I'm a jawbone, or I'm a knucklebone, <laughs> or a knucklehead. Uh, but we let others in the church put that on us. Wouldn't that be an interesting enterprise? We won't go that. We won't do that. But no, may the Lord just continue to build his church. But also know as we begin this series of messages on the nature of how the scriptures present the gracious love of God, this beginning one, on God's care for you, may that find an expression and our care for this world that we do in his name. Would you please stand? Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for getting it done. If we've tried too hard to do it ourselves, Lord, may we realize that we can be free from that, uh, that rat race. And just allow what you did on the cross, what was complete for us, to keep us faithful and full, that we may be a backbone in your church. In the name of the Christ, amen.